Playing guitar, reading traditional notation is not that easy, as you know. So many of you prefer to play from tablatures, but you can read traditional notation as if it was a tablature. You just have to know some things about it. Let's begin with the C major scale. I already did a video on that, how to put the C major scale from scratch to the fretboard. The C major scale is this. Apparently, all the notes have the same distant one from another. And we have seven notes, C, D, E, F, G, A, B and C. That's okay, that's fine. You see here, there is no eight under the clef. Here it is. And this actually is guitar notation. So you would see the C major scale that sounds in this way. As a guitarist, you would see it in that way. Now, putting this to the guitar, what we have to know is the actual structure of our tone system. And for this, I have the tone clock. This is simply put the 12 notes that we have on a clock face. From that clock face, we extract the notes we need for the C major scale, which you see here. And if you put then the notes in this line, you nearly see how it will be on the fretboard. From there, we go to put all the single notes to the fretboard on one string, and so we obtain the scale on one single string. Doing this on the guitar, you have in your hands the structure of the C major scale and all the other scales that use only notes without accidentals. You see E and F and B and C, which are just one half step apart. All the others are whole steps. And if I write that simply with numbers, you see the half step in position 3, 4 and 7, 8. What is very nice, if we now divide these eight notes, we have two so-called tetrachords with four notes and the half steps are always on the last two notes. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, that was the thing we did for C major. Now, if I would like to play another scale, I just transfer this fingering and the structure of the notes to another string and I obtain a new scale. Here I did that on the first E string. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Question is, what notes actually do I play? So I have to discover what note is this, so I have the root. I am on the E string and play in the first fret, so my note is F. What I'm going to play, and what I'm already playing, not knowing actually what notes I play, just by using the structure of our hands is the F major scale on the first string alone. Now what you see here are all the notes of the tone clock put on the first string. We have F, G, A, B, C, D, E and F. Here are the half steps and this is all the scale. But if we now compare this to this F major scale we already played, you see that in this point there is a difference because the structure is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight with the half steps, three, four, seven, eight. But actually our half steps are E, F, B and C. And the B is in the wrong place. Listen to how the scales actually sounds. Obviously, the scale exists, but it's not F major, but F Lydian. What you actually see is that the B is right in the place where the two tetrachords should be divided. Observing that on the clock face, you see that it B is just the note on the other end, six hours away, so to say. And this is a very odd note because the sound and the intervals coming out is a tritone and the tritone is quite dissonant. F, B, or B, F. That's very much death metal, isn't it? When you observe carefully my tone clock, what you see is that I put in 
where the B is, the natural sign, and where the B flat is, the flat sign. They are in use for a lot of time, and I will show you this in a book by Adam Gumpelsheimer, which is a music theory book from Augsburg in Germany, in Bavaria, from 1591. Here we have this image, which is the Gamut image that shows all the notes and all the tones that were in use in that period. Let's have a closer look on this. Here you see the notes with the letter names. The lowest one is Gamma, that's why it's called the Gamut. That would be G, then A, B, C, D, E. This is the hexachord on G, which is the G major scale without the seventh grade. And we have the B written as a capital B. And on the side you see the natural sign. This is the sign for the B quadro, the square B, so to say, which differs just from a B with angles, actually, by this little stem that we have under the right side of the letter. Up here you see the hexachord on F, which is F, G, A, B, C, D. And this B is what we now call the B-flat, but actually it was the round B, B rotondum, uh, also called B molle, which means soft, the soft B. Meanwhile, this B has been the B square, the B quadratum, or B hard, B durum. So we had actually two different names for B. B molle, which is this, a B duro, Hard B, which is this. Also said rotundum and quadratum. So round and squared. In our F major scale, we actually use the B molle, the round one. So this was the problem, and this is the solution. Okay, now we put that B in our scale. And our semitones are okay. This becomes a key signature in the moment that I put down the B and write it right after the clef. In this case, the B is valid for all the notes that belong to F major. In F major, you will always need B flat. If you have a piece in F major and there's no B flat, there's happening something harmonically in the piece. You already studied the F major scale on the guitar and you have the fingering in your hands. And when we apply the fingering to the scale, what we have here, which is very full and very rich with fingerings, we have notation as near as possible to tablature because you have the string, you have the position, you have the finger, everything you need. So this is as close as it can get to tablature. This is how the scale would be written in tense position on three strings. The same fingering that we had in C major. Watch that other video. And this is the position in the tablature. This is extremely full with information to the fingering. But actually, if you know your fingering in the hands and you have the structure in your hand, this is the information you need. Position and eventually the string. If you now go through the scale, just apply the fingering you already have in your hand and listen to the music that you play. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. The half steps are here, the rest are whole steps. Change the strings when your fingers are finished and you're done. That's it. Thank you very much for watching. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments. If you like the video, give me a thumb up and subscribe to the channel. You will find the PDFs as usual on my Dropbox if you subscribe to the newsletter. So consider that. Thank you very much. See you next time. Bye.